Second half kickoff, Alabama leading by a score of 7-0. Roger, right, I just saw something I haven't seen too often. Alabama came back out here, and with units on the field, did they loosening up out there? I haven't seen that either, Lindsay. They were actually going through their plays, uh, similar to the pregame warm-ups. Right. That's a good idea. There's a long half here in the Cotton Bowl with all the pageantry, and I'm sure they probably got a little bit uh, more stale than normal and sitting in the locker room, and they decided to come out and warm up a little bit. It's a good idea. Dropping back deep now, Bob, Rob Marshall and Jerry Gray to receive the kickoff for Texas. And it will be Alabama kicking it off. Terry Sanders will uh, kick it off. He's teeing it up on the 40-yard line. Terry Sanders. Texas and Alabama together have played in 61 bowl games. And together they have won nine national championships. Alabama's won six. Texas has won three. Marshall is back here deep. He's the man they try to get underneath the football. On the kickoff return, Texas trailing by seven points. A win today would make Alabama the first team in history to win seven straight bowl games in seven years. There is the referee's whistle. Here comes Sanders. Going deep. It will not be run out. Taken by Jerry Gray about eight yards deep in the end zone. Touchback. First and ten at the 20-yard line. So the Texas Longhorns now settle about seeing what they can do about advancing the football against that Alabama defense. Clark and Jones are the running backs in the ball game for quarterback Robert Brewer. Brewer took over when McIver injured his shoulder and Brewer has kept the job. They send Herky Walls out to a wide left and Donnie Little out to a wide right. Back in the right set, Jones in the left set for Brewer. Jones. Six yards to the 26 before Mike Pitts from Baltimore, Maryland made the tackle. The Brewers uh, really has done a good job for Texas. He came in in that Houston game and brought him back in the second half. It was a tie football game, 14 to 14, one three in a row. The team has a lot of confidence in Robert Brewer. He showed at the before the half that he can throw the football. But if Texas is going to throw it with success, they've got to block one. They've got to pick up the stunts and the blitzes. When Brewer has time, he can hit those receivers downfield as he showed before the half. Tight end moving in motion. Get it to the fullback Clark. And Darrell Clark wrestles his way up to the 47-yard line before Jeremiah Castillo brings him down with Russ Wood. First down, 10 yards to go for the Texas Longhorn. Well, here's Clark up the middle. He had some success in the first half. He ran four times for 18 yards, but he breaks it back over the block on the inside by Dawson, and, and Terry Tausch, the fine tackle, got a nice block. Clark broke it back against the grain, downfield for a big gain. He's got a 6.7-yard rushing average. He just doesn't run the football very much from that eye formation. Picked up 21 yards on the play, first and 10 at the 47-yard line. Clark and Jones, the setback's well split. Jones, down Jones, but he's down. By Robbie Jones, the left linebacker for Alabama. At the 44-yard line, loss of three seconds and 13. You know, Texas moved the ball, Lindsay, in the first half. They, they would move it, uh, but Alabama would make a big play and either a trap, trapping the quarterback, or they'd stop a run to the outside, similar to that right there. They just can't move consistently. They're giving up too many big plays on offense to, to Alabama, especially uh, losses. Off to the left side, a little to the right, running backs in an eye. Brewer fake to the tailback, he's got the ball. He's going to keep the ball. Up to the 47-yard line of Alabama, Jackie Klein was there. Brewer gave a nice little stutter step there, got him a few extra yards. He was looking downfield. Uh, Lawrence Sampleton had the defenders beat right about now, but he couldn't uh, do very much with with big uh, Mike Pitts chasing him, so Brewer decides to tuck it away. A little stutter step, nice move to the inside, gets four or five extra yards. Third down and four yards to go at the 47-yard line of Alabama. Big third down play coming here now for the Texas Longhorns. Jones on a reverse play. Donnie Little, former quarterback, picks up the first and 10. They had him in a wing left, and there's a wing back reverse in effect. As he got it up to the 34-yard line, Tommy Wilcox made the tackle. Little had to cut this back inside pretty quickly. He's got Herky Walls actually is trailing him. He has a chance to pitch the ball out. There's Brewer back there also, but he cut the ball inside and gets some nice yardage for the first down. 
Donnie Little, who was a quarterback and at his request became a wide receiver at the University of Texas. Quick pitch to Jam Jones. Stopped at the 31-yard line after a gain of three by Tommy Wilcox at second and seven. Robbie Jones also on the tackle. You know, head coach Fred Akers at Texas has posted the best five-year one-and-loss record in Southwest Conference history. He's had an unbeaten season, a Heisman Trophy winner, Earl Campbell, high national ratings, and five bowl teams. Here's Wilcox pursuing. He's got uh, three interceptions this year, but he's a hitter. He really pops them, and you can see right there, he just uh, laid it into Jam Jones. He came from the safety spot across the field and made the hit. There's the Clark. He spins, but gets only a yard to the 30, which will make it another big third down and six yards to go. Jackie Klein there on the tackle for Alabama. Alabama came into this game ranked number three in the nation behind Clemson and Georgia. Texas ranked number five or six, depending on which poll you read. Both figured that if they win, they'd have a shot at a national championship. Brewer looked at the sidelines. He gets his play from the sidelines. And, of course, this is a big play, Lindsay. Brewer's got the ball. And he never had a chance. The Alabama Rice was right there when he looked up. And so it's fourth down in the punting unit will come on here now. Russ Wood and Tommy Wilcox got to him first. So they brought the safety blitz that time, and Russ Wood was in there, and there's pressure uh, inside also, but it really was Wood coming from his outside linebacking position and also 15 Wilcox that forced Brewer to try to get to the other side, and over there waiting was big Jackie Klein, number 98 also. Terry Tausch, the All-American tackle, is down now, and they're looking at a knee. He's stretching it out there a little bit, flexing it. Terry Tausch from New Braunfels, Texas. Limping a little bit as he comes out. John Goodson's in to do the punting. Joey Jones has dropped back to receive it now for the Alabama Crimson Tide. Alabama's leading 7-0. We're in the third quarter. 10 minutes, 43 seconds left to play in this period. Jones looks, lets it ride. And it is a touchback, first and 10 at the 20-yard line. Well, that's twice Texas has had an opportunity to down the ball. And you can't, you can't hit the ball and, and your momentum carry yourself and the ball in the end zone. You just can't do that. And Texas has come close a couple of times. So Alabama starts first and 10 at the 20-yard line. Holiday greetings from Budweiser. Getting attention along the sideline, you saw him limp off a moment ago. Had a great year on the Texas Longhorns. But Alabama has the ball on a seven-point lead. Their own 20-yard line here in the third quarter. Lewis is the quarterback. Smothered. At the 19-yard line for a loss of one. It'll be second down and 11 yards to go. Texas and Alabama, two of the glamour teams of college football. They're among the top five teams in all time, winning percentage. John Haynes, sophomore from Fort Worth, in there on the last tackle. And also Bruce Schultz. Uh, on that option, the inside people, Darnell, and the inside tackle, and the middle linebacker, have the fullback. And then the outside people, Holly and Schultz, usually take the quarterback, and the safety or someone else has to force the pitch. That time, Schultz did a great job on the quarterback. Now the right halfback. Jeff Fagan moved it up to the 20-yard line for one, and that is all. So it'll be third down and 11, Ralph Darnell. Five more from North Mesquite in to make the tackle. So it is nine minutes, 35 seconds left to play in the third quarter. The clock is running. And third and nine, and Alabama goes into deep punt formation on third down. And they kick on third down, and Walter Lewis does the kicking. The ball rolls, and it rolls, and it is down by Bendris. At the 25. Well, that's not a quick kick, but it's almost because they kick on third down with the quarterback back there doing the booting, and everybody's not sure whether he's going to kick or not. He got a good roll, and so Texas gets the ball first and 10 at the 25 yard line. I'd like to keep that great GM feeling, Mr. Goodwrench, but how am I supposed to know when to do what? Just watch your 75s. 75s? Here. To help you keep that great GM feeling, your GM maintenance schedule calls for a checkup every 7,500 miles. Looks complicated, Mr. Goodwrench. It isn't. 
All you have to do is watch the top of the charts and your odometer. We take care of the rest. Keep that great GM feeling. This is the good wrench. Makes it easy. With genuine GM parts. Here's a great gift idea. Give the Olympus OM10 and you'll never worry about what to give again. Start with the OM10 for great pictures automatically. And give an Olympus flash, an Olympus telephoto lens, an Olympus auto winder. All from the OM system. Over 200 gifts made to fit the OM10. Give the Olympus OM10 and you'll never worry about what to give again. These are America's greatest sporting events. In that was a little unusual. Bear Bryant had his quarterback go into deep punt formation on a third and nine and punt the football, and he got 65 yards. Walter Lewis was a national punt, pass, and kick champion when he was eight years old. Now it's first and ten for Texas, but they have the ball in their own 25-yard line. The third back and it's Darrell Clark, and he's got some running room. And the 33 is out there to the 43-yard line. Steve Booker finally brought him down. Well, they're doing a good job up front. Mike Babb is getting a uh, good block, and Warren Lyles that time. And here, watch the center cut off Lyles, and then that's all you need is just a just an inch there. And the cutoff block by Babb springs Clark loose, and the uh, guards go up on the linebackers also that gave Clark some extra time downfield. Clark's run the ball very well. 18-yard pickup on the last play. Here is Jam Jones, and he's getting into the 45-yard line. Now let's go down to Frank Lieber. Injury report on Terry Tosh, the All-American offensive tackle. The doctors say he has a hyper-extended knee. It is unknown at this time whether or not he'll be back in the game. But obviously, the problems Texas has had protecting Brewer, I think they're going to need him. They might be in big trouble if they don't have him back. Lindsay? Okay, Frank. Second down and eight yards to go at the 45-yard line. Brewer pumps once. But someone is hanging on to his leg, and he's dropped at the 40-yard line. And the someone is Mike Rodriguez, number 31. Also, Russ Wood get in there. Uh, Mike Babb pulled out to the left and tried to block on Wood. There was penetration from that side. Also, number 76, uh, Millard couldn't hold his man, and Brewer is uh, sacked again. Making it third down at 13 yards to go for the Longhorn. They have the ball at their own 40, and Alabama is still leading here by a score of 7 and nothing. It is Walker from the tailback, John Walker. And out there to the 43, that brings on the punting unit. Randy Edwards made the tackle. And that was third and 13, and Texas decided they didn't want a chance in a turnover. And they decided to go a little bit conservative that time. They go off tackle with a quick hitting play. Walker couldn't get very much. It was a passing situation, so Texas, they're exchanging right now field positions, basically what both teams are trying to do, both being pretty conservative. Barefoot John Goodson in there to do the punting. Joey Jones drop back deep, drops back deep for Alabama. Low snap, he picks it up. It's on the 29. Rolling. It'll be at the 22-yard line. Jeremiah Castile. First down, 10 yards to go at the 22-yard line. Let's go down again to Frank Lieber. Keep in mind once again that Alabama still has an outside shot of becoming the number one team in the land. If they win this ball game this afternoon, if Clemson loses tonight to Nebraska in the Orange Bowl, and if Georgia should get beat by Pittsburgh in the Sugar Bowl, Alabama, in all probability, would be number one. Lindsey? All right, Frank, first and ten for the Crimson Tide, they have a seven-point lead. Walter Lewis pops it outside. Vendress with a diving catch. Jesse Vendress at the 30-yard line. I don't know why Vendross uh, slid that time. Lewis really got that ball out there in pretty good shape, and Vendross caught the ball, but he went down trying to do it. I think he could have hung on to this football and run, and run with it a little bit. But he uh, got six yards instead of a big game. About eight yards. There is, he breaks the outside. The ball's in front of him a little bit, so he tries to come back to it and cradle it in. At least he caught it. Joey Jones in a wide left. Ken Simon, the fullback, but a lot of traffic right in there at the 30-yard line. 
John Haynes was there, and so was Eric Holly. <laughs> young, a young Longhorn fan. A little more interested in the popcorn, I think. Third down and two yards to go for Alabama at their own 30-yard line. Lewis has got the first and 10. Got across the 40-yard line with Doug Shankle, 48, holding on. First and 10 at the 43-yard line. Again, the quarterback just reads. Look at him looking at that end down. He's not even uh, concerned about anything else. He reads. The fullback doesn't know he's going to get the ball. Quarterback pulls out of his gut. Lewis is downfield with a big game. Wishbone formation for Alabama. Quarterback hanging on to the football as his fullback was riding by, and uh, it's a game of about a yard at most, jammed up by Schultz. That's still amazing to me, Lindsay. That fullback not knowing he's going to get the ball. It's all it's up to the quarterback. And the, the previous play, you can see Lewis looking at that defensive end. The defensive end crashes down. He'll keep the ball. Then he'll option with the back. If the defensive end goes upfield, he'll give the ball to the fullback. But the fullback just doesn't know, and he's really got to concentrate on that ball. And it does cause some fumbles. And Alabama's fumbled quite a bit this year in the wishbone. And back in motion across. Lewis going deep. Bindus making a dive, and he can't get to it. Bedford was covering defensively on that corner. Vance Bedford from Beaumont, Texas. Both teams are penetrating very well, putting pressure on the quarterback. The difference is Alabama's getting to the quarterback. This time, Lewis was rushed, and he put the ball in the line. He didn't give Bendros the chance to run under. Didn't put enough air under the ball, and it was thrown long. But the, the teams are pressuring each other, except Alabama is actually getting to Brewer and causing the trap where Texas is getting close, but they still are having trouble tackling an elusive Lewis. Tim Clarkson at a wide receiver, shotgun formation, Lewis for the direct snap. Lewis runs the ball, gets it up to the 49-yard line. Jeff Lighting in to make the tackle along with Doug Shankle. That'll bring in the punting unit on fourth down. Four minutes, 20 seconds up to play in the third quarter. Alabama still leading 7-0. Well, the last time, of course, Lewis punted from that. That time he went, he ran the draw play and wasn't quite effective enough. Fourth down, and midfield they shift now into punt formation. Malcolm Simmons goes deep to do the punt. There's a whistle across the middle. There's a whistle that will cost them five yards for a delay, I think. Well, that's worth the gamble. The delay doesn't mean a great deal. It's five yards back. They're still at the 45 and still will bottle up Texas with a good punt. Dead ball. Delay. Offense. Fourth down. Clock running. Stay in punt formation. Malcolm Simmons there. Rob Marshall is deep. High snap. Left footer gets it off. Marshall lets it go. Touchback. Across the end line. They'll be put in play first and 10 at the 20-yard line. So we still have Alabama out front by seven points. We now have three minutes, 34 seconds remaining to be played in the third quarter here at the Cotton Bowl in Dallas, Texas. 43 years of age, Fred Akers, head coach of the Longhorns of the University of Texas. You try to get him moving now from the 20-yard line. Bear Bryant is sitting in the number two defensive unit for the University of Alabama at the moment. Robert Brewer still quarterbacking the Longhorns. Sam Jones, our brother Walker to the left side. John Walker, Steve Booker made the tackle. Got three yards out to the 23, making it second down and seven yards to go. Three minutes, five seconds left to play in the third quarter. Here comes Johnny Little out to a wide right from Dickinson, Texas. Tight end across. Quick pitch. Walker. 
the tailback. Oh, he ever cut down. Gerald Sprinkle. It is at the 20-yard line. Loss of three. It's a third and ten. Todd Roper going off the field defensively for Alabama. Donnie Little out there wide left. Lucky Wall on the wide right and the tight ends in motion. Penalty marker. Completed. Uh, Texas in legal procedure that time. Lindsay had a good play. Good play set up too. Turkey Walls made the catch. Josh Henderson covering defensively, but there is the marker. Are you back from there? Referee is explaining the option to Alabama. Yeah. I don't think that'll be a tough choice. Warren Lyles, the captain. Good decision, Warren. Take the penalty. There he says. Illegal motion. Offense, third down. Third and 15 at the 15th. Look, look back on that uh, based on what we see after this, this play right here. That's a big play, Lindsey. Texas is out of the out of their backyard a little bit. The first down, the 34. Now they're backed up in third and 15. They have run a little exercise along the sideline. Yeah, the Alabama defense is strong. Head in there that time. Now oh. Jimmy Watts. One thing I can figure is that third and 15, they've been uh, blitzed so much and the quarterback's been trapped, they don't want to take a chance on an obvious passing situation of uh, getting the blitz and getting trapped again. So now it is fourth down. Joey Jones is coming for Alabama and he's gone deep. John Goodson, Goodson does the hunting for Alabama. The barefoot boy goes into the end zone. He takes the snap. There's Jones. This is Jones back. He feels it at his 45. Gets back to his 48, and that's that. So let's go down to Frank Lieber. Well, last year, you might recall, we were on the Alabama sideline and talked to Jerry Pate, who's a big Crimson Tide fan. He couldn't be here today, so we thought we'd give Texas equal time. Ben Crenshaw is a, what do they call a guest coach? Yes, I think so. <laughs> I, I don't know where Jerry is today. I, was, I had it all planned out for him, but... Texas needs a big play. All right, let's see what happens here. And off to Ginyard. Mickey Ginyard from Atlanta, Georgia, carrying. John Haynes made the tackle. Up there just across the midfield marker. Gain of about two yards makes it second down and eight. Again, let's go down to Frank Lieber. Ben, I know uh, the tour is starting up in PGA Tour, and uh, CBS begins its coverage with the Crosby, and I'm sure you'll be there first week in February. Yes, I certainly will. I've got a good partner, Nathaniel Crosby, he won the U.S. Amateur last year, and I'll play with him, I'll play with him if he'll have me, so <clears throat> I'm looking forward to that now. Lewis on the keeper. Lewis to the 30-yard line and inside. Kept up by William Graham. First and 10 for Alabama. And it will be at the 28-yard line of Texas. Well, he's a great player for this wishbone. He's not only a fine passer, and they get the big play out of him passing, but he can run the football. He can option with it. He can pitch it out. This time he keeps the ball downfield into the secondary. Almost breaks it right here. He trips, trips, trips up a little bit. Picked up 22 yards on the play. First and 10. Busted there, and Joe Carter dives onto the football. Yes, I'll be back there at the 37-yard line. <laughs> and now time has run out in the third quarter. So, with Alabama still leading by a score of 7-0, we'll be back with more from the 46th Annual Cotton Bowl Classic after this word from your local station. The Cotton Bowl has been sponsored by Michelob Light, an exceptional light beer with a rich, smooth taste.
Datsun, who invite you to see all the Datsun cars and trucks at your Datsun dealer today. And by U.S. Armed Forces, it's a great place to start. That's a fun and excitement at the Cotton Bowl at the end of three quarters, Alabama leading 7-0. In the Fiesta Bowl, in the third quarter, Penn State is leading Southern Cal 26-10. This is Lindsey Nelson with Roger Staubach and Frank Lieber here in Dallas, Texas. Bear Bryant. You know, the Bear seems a lot looser this year, Lindsey. Winning that 315th game took a lot of pressure off of him. But, you know, one thing was interesting, that Auburn game, the players really were emotionally drained after that game. They had a lot of pressure on the players themselves. They wanted to be part of history also. Well, they did, in fact. Shotgun formation, Lewis for Alabama. Evade Packers. Moved it down to the 31-yard line. Schultz in there on the tackle. You take some things for granted at that time. Uh, Lewis gets the ball back there, and there's good penetration that time. Uh, Eric Holly was in there, but he just takes a step to the right. Just easy. Breaks down the sidelines, but that quickness into the pocket like that makes a difference uh, for a quarterback between a trap, 10-yard loss, and a, at least a significant game. Third and 13. Good. And it's caught at the 15-yard line by Bendris. Bedford covering on the corner. First and 10 for Alabama at the Texas 15-yard line. Here's Lewis, and Lewis shows you something here. He's throwing his sideline all the way across the field. You've got to have a strong arm to do this. This time, Bendris keeps both feet inbound, at least one of them, and that's a good catch. Alabama leading by a score of seven and nothing and driving here in the fourth quarter, up there in the wishbone. Fagan. Jeff Fagan from Hollywood, Florida, carrying on the play. To the 12-yard line. Again, a three makes it second and seven. Schultz on the tackle along with Bobby Johnson. Bendis coming back onto the field now, and Joey Jones is going off. Bendis out to a wide left. Started there. Stopped at the 14 by Ed Williams. Lost at two. Third and nine at the 14-yard line. So Bruce Schultz was in on that play again. There's a guy with great speed. He's got the size and range also. He's 6'6", 240 pounds, and he's got to be a pro spot prospect, Lindsay. He's got nine sacks this year. He's intercepted the pass, and he's been a factor all day. In and out of the, uh, the backfield when he's blitzing and also containing those end runs. He did a nice job there along with uh, Williams. Joey Jones came on, and now Bendris is sprinting to get off the field as they come up to the line. He got off all right. Lewis with a quick pitch, and it's taken across the tight end. Behind the line, the shovel, the pitch pass. Behind the line, Hatchet made the tackle. Not the shovel pass. It's a completed forward pass. He sprinted out to his left. And here's, uh, here's Kraut coming inside. The ball's pitched inside, and kind of fools people. John Haynes didn't know where the ball was. He tried to get a hand on Kraut. The Kraut got inside and was good enough for the first. Uh, well, it's not quite. It's fourth and two. Lindsay. Fourth and two, and Alabama's taking a timeout. They've got a double tight end in there, but Alabama takes a timeout. Fourth down and two yards to go when players resumed, and they got the ball down at the seven-yard line. Now the Crimson Tide. They're getting Peter Kim ready. They're getting Peter Kim, their kicker, ready. But perhaps they're going to try to pick up three more. Alabama's leading by a score of seven, and I think 12 minutes left to play in the game here at the Cotton Bowl. I had a chance to talk to Fred Akers, uh, Lindsay, and they, they have a man-to-man -man concept, uh, Texas does. They... They don't always play man-to-man. -man. We discussed it uh, before the game. 
Well, we can't just line up there and play man-to-man -man every time. We're going to have to protect our corners with some deep zone coverage behind them and hopefully disguise it and mix it up enough that we can stay with our, our pure man-to-man -man as, as much as we want when we want it. But that's our style of play. Peter Kim attempting a 24-yard field goal. Kim attempting here now to add three points to the seven points that Alabama has. And it's good. Kim, the young man from Honolulu, has added a 24-yard field goal for Alabama. The Crimson Tide goes out in front by a score of 10 to nothing. And it comes with 12 minutes, 27 seconds remaining to be played. Well, Roger, you and I and Bear Bryant, to name just three of the people, will be in Palo Alto a week from tomorrow for the East-West Shrine game. You played in that game. Back a few years ago with the, uh, you probably remember that one, mud was about three or four inches deep. But it was a good game. Guys like Butkus and Sayers and uh, a few other people uh, years ago. Bear Bryant will be coaching the East. Paul Wigan and Stamp will be coaching the West. And we'll see two of the nation's top quarterbacks, Buck, Buck Ballou of Georgia, Mike Pagel of Arizona State. So we're looking forward to that one. Don't miss it Saturday, January 9th, the East-West Shrine game, 3 p.m. Eastern time on CBS Sports. Gary Sanders is going to kick it off now. That's he right there for Alabama. Marshall and Jerry Gray have dropped back deep to receive it for the Texas Longhorns, who are now down by 10 points with 12.27 to play. Here comes Sanders. Field it short at the 16-yard line. Return to the 20 to the 30 to the 35 and on up to the 40-yard line by Jitter Fields. Jitter Fields took it short, stopped by Simon. That's good field position for Texas. I guess this was intentional, Lindsey, but not, I get, the way he kicked that ball, it looks like maybe he just shanked it. They didn't, they didn't want to give Texas this kind of field position. They've been kicking the ball off pretty well, but Texas is up to the 40-yard line, and they're in pretty good shape right now. Robert Brewer is still the quarterback. Terry Orr and Rodney Tate have come into the ballgame at running backs now for Texas. Terry Orr and Rodney Tate. Brewer. Trying to run it. Hits the sideline at the 42. Picked up two yards on the scamper. Russ Wood from Elba, Alabama. Ran him out. Well, that's the time to throw. They've got the three men up front coming and only one linebacker, so Brewer has some time. Robert just can't find anybody downfield, so he breaks up the middle for two or three yards. On, on the, the uh, must-pass situations, though, Alabama's bringing the, the, uh, the entire kitchen sinks coming at him, so he's not having much of a chance. They've got to throw in the running situations. They've got to hit some big plays to get back in this football game. Brewer went over to get his play. He's got Walsh to the left side and Donnie Little right. The tight end is Lawrence Hamilton. Little. It's going to be marked at the 49-yard line of Alabama. Jeremiah Castile on the tackle. First down. That's a first and ten at the 49. It's a sideline route to uh, Little, out to the outside. Little does get the first down, barely by a yard, but he, before he's hit by Castile. Little is a former quarterback. He's got excellent hands. Today he's grabbed balls that have been high. He's grabbed a few low passes, but he's got excellent hands and good concentration. He's adapted that wide receiver position very well. Texas across into Alabama territory now in an eye formation. There they come again. They did indeed, and Brewer never had a chance. He dropped at the 44-yard line by Russ Wood and Randy Edwards. That just seems when uh, Alabama knows Texas is going to throw, they can pretty well put the, the clamps on on Brewer inside and outside. He can't even uh, scramble anywhere. They're just all over the place. You see the safety number 15 Wilcox is, is in there just to, to make sure that the uh, somebody picks him up and, and springs someone else free. Second and 17 at the 44-yard line. Brewer. Incomplete to Donnie Little. I didn't mean to jinx Little. <laughs> but that ball was right there, and that's the kind of catch that Little's made all day. And in fact, that was an excellent throw by Brewer, one of his better throws. He gets the ball high, maybe a tad behind Little. No, it's right there. He just dropped the football. He's, so, he's 
coming back saying, Robert, give me the ball again. I'm sorry. Third and 17. Little from a wide left. Boer up the middle. And it's completed. Taken by Ricky Wall. First and 10. Texas at the Alabama 30. Well, those inside routes are there. They're, uh, Alabama, when they don't blitz, they're back in a the zone. They got the safeties deep, the cornerbacks are up, and that deep middle area is there, and Brewer is just drilling that ball right in the center of the field and throwing the ball very well. The Herky Walls knew he was going to get hit hard, but yet he concentrates right here. Caught the ball between everybody, and bam, and he still maintained possession, and big first down for Texas. Brewer has been unable to get the signal for the next play from the sideline. Brewer kept looking and shaking his head and so finally took a timeout. So Brewer walked over to the sideline. They were wigwagging the play to him, but he couldn't get it clearly, so he called a timeout. When they resume, it'll be first and 10, Texas at the Alabama 30. Alabama leading 10-0. Alabama's leading 10 nothing. The Texas Longhorns are driving here at the Cotton Bowl. They have it first down 10 yards to go at the 30-yard line. Freddie Akers, head coach of the Texas Longhorns, trying to get something on the scoreboard to get right back into the ball game. Here with 10 minutes, 36 seconds left to play. Robert Brewer, quarterbacking the Longhorns. Duhon is in the wide left. He's in there, the wide receiver. Number seven. Brewer. Duhon, short. One hop, incomplete. The Brewer rushed his throw that time. Duhon had the uh, play to the outside, but Brewer just rushed it and put the ball behind him. Second down. Ten yards to go for Texas. Texas has moved the football, as we mentioned earlier, on big plays and good drives, but they've always uh, stopped themselves once they've got near that 30-yard line, this is a series they need to do something with the football and get some points. Duhon came out, Herky Walls back in on the wide left. And it's incomplete to the tight end, Sampleton. Lawrence Sampleton, the tight end. Warren Lyles putting pressure on the passer. Well, Sampleton was open. A lot of pressure this time on Brewer, but the, the uh, pass protection was a little bit better. But the pressure was there. He got the ball. He, he, won, he rushed a little bit, got the ball too far out in front, but Sampleton was open, broke to the inside. Nice move on Wilcox. He broke, faked it to the right, came back inside, got Wilcox turned around, but Brewer rushed the throw, and the ball's too far out in front. Third down and 10 yards to go. Down and Little, double to the left side. Little in motion. Now timeout again. Timeout called again. Well, he saw the blitz. He saw Wilcox uh, gave away the blitz a little bit early, and he didn't like the play, and he called the timeout. Those are costly. When you're behind 10 to nothing in the fourth quarter, you can't waste timeouts if you have to come back. So when play is resumed, it'll be third down, 10 yards to go for Texas, and they'll have the ball at the Alabama 30-yard line. Texas with the ball, third down, 10 yards to go at the Alabama 30. Alabama leading in the game by a score of 10-0. 10, 10 minutes, 28 seconds left to play. This is where it's interesting. Alabama's best pass defense has been the blitz. So Texas has got to be ready for the blitz. They should have a play on that they can take advantage of the blitz. Robert Burr, the quarterback, a little in motion back toward the inside. Now the quarterback draw, and he's up the middle. Look at Burr go. He may go touchdown. That's touchdown. Exactly, exactly what they did, Lindsey. They did, in fact, take advantage of the blitz. He was wide open as he got through there and scampered in for 30 yards and a Texas touchdown. Well, they were coming, too. They were coming from the outside, and the inside, there was one good block, and the inside, there was nobody else there. Perfect play called by Freddie Akers. Perfect execution. Watch the block on uh, Lyle right there by Babb. He pushes him to the outside. Everybody else is coming to the uh, from the outside. The blitz was on the outside people, but the inside was cleared away by Babb when he blocked Lyle. Raul Allegra with the conversion. Raul Allegra converts. So Texas gets seven points on the scoreboard. Oh now, with 10 minutes, 22 seconds left to play in the game, it is now. Alabama 10, and the University of Texas Longhorn 7. That's a big game tomorrow in the playoffs. Tampa Bay Buccaneers and the Dallas Cowboys. Well, that is a big one. It's an uh, interesting matchup. Tampa Bay's got a hustling, hitting defense. The Cowboys got a very explosive offense. The NFL today kicks off at 12.30 Eastern time for that game tomorrow.
Hey, Doug Williams has come on strong, too. A fine quarterback, and he's got the ability to throw to Kevin House in the big plays. And then on Sunday, of course, the New York Giants and the San Francisco 49ers. That's 4.30 Eastern on Sunday right here on CBS. Raul Allegre has teed it up at the 40-yard line. And Joey Jones has dropped back deep, standing a yard deep in the end zone. We have a 10-7 ball game and a lot of time to play here in the 46th annual Cotton Bowl. Chase Silver, Joey Jones, five yards deep, but not run it out, touchback. Well, oh, that's good. You, you really like that when you're on the specialty team run down to those kickoffs. You want your kicker to kick in the end zone. You buy him dinner after the game when he does that. So now Alabama will try to move the football and kill the clock. Texas, of course, will try to hold and get the football. Fun and excitement at the Cotton Bowl. Sellout crowd here this afternoon. Well, this is the series that tests Alabama. The momentum, you can feel it swing over to Texas. They're excited. All their players are standing on the sidelines. The only way you keep a team quiet is to move the football, get a few first downs. So Alabama's got their job right now. Referee is stopping play. Over to talk to Walter Lewis. What that was all about. I wonder. Now he is talking to the Texas Longhorn. This crowd is really alive. Whatever it was, there was no walk-off, and we proceed first and ten at the 20-yard line. Getting the fullback, Ricky Moore. He got two yards to the 22. Well, these were interesting times when you when you can feel that defense as fired up as Texas is, and you're over there on offense, you're thinking, boy, we've got to come up with the play to get the first down, and that'll change the round. I'm sure Walter Lewis has got this in his mind right now. We've got to do it. We've got to get that play. We've got to get that first down to get this momentum back and the Crimson Tide's favor. Bendros has gone off, and Joey Jones is in there. Lewis has the ball. He keeps it. Across the 30 for a first down. Fumble. Fumble and the ball got away. The scramble is on. I think the, the officials are going to blow it dead, Lindsay. Looks as though they will at the 32, in which case it'll be a first down. Now Lewis had both wide receivers out that time. And he took it upon himself. He had the three backs in the backfield, the two wide receivers. I don't know if he was even going to throw that ball. He just said, hey, I'm going to go for it, get that first down, and we can't really get a good uh, view of that. We have a Texas man injured, so the training staff is out. It's Lighting. Jeff Lighting is getting attention from the training staff. Whistle was blown, and it'll be first and ten at the 32, Alabama's ball. Six thousand acres, nearly as many chores. My three Datsuns are a match for anything. To go anywhere, four by four. Roomy King Cat, and my Datsun Little Hustler. Hauls as much as some standard pickups and gets better gas mileage than all of them. Tough and thrifty, like me. From one tough customer to another, we are driven. Hey. Make a love light for the winning team, okay? You guys should do that for us. <laughs> Alabama first and ten. They started their own 32-yard line. Lewis kept it as his fullback rolled by Eric Holly. Pulled him down as he moved out to the 33-yard line. Again, Lewis is key in Holly, and Holly crashed down the line of scrimmage. I think Lewis wanted to pull that ball out, an option uh, with the run or the pitch. But Holly had that play snuffed out before Lewis had a chance to even react. Well, we all have our priorities, and sleep is one of the big ones. This fellow's not asleep, Bear Bryant. He's comes in tied up there, second down and nine yards to go at the 33. Ricky Moore stopped by John Haynes. 
And the Jeff Lighting came off the field before Lindsay. Looks like he might have a pinched nerve. Fine linebacker. He's been replaced by Mark Lang. Texas defense in 81, second best in the nation. Bendris is coming back on. And the tight end, Bart Kraut, is going off. They'll get a direct snap here. Walter Lewis from the shotgun. There's the ball. 40. To the 46, first and 10. Doug Shackle made the hit with William Graham. Well, the quarterback draw has been kind of special. Worked for a touchdown for Texas. And here it is for a big first down for Alabama. He just took one step back, let those linebackers start going back into their uh, coverage, and he took off for the first down. Walter Lewis, fine passer and an excellent runner. First and 10 for the tie. They lead here by a score of 10 to 7. Lewis to his fullback, and that's Ricky Moore from Huntsville, Alabama. Seven minutes, 50 seconds remaining to be played in the game. Bruce Schultz also in that tackle. Well, Lewis has made two big first downs running the football. Got Alabama out of trouble. They were back on the 20-yard line. He got them out. Now they're at midfield with a little over seven minutes to go with a three-point lead. Second down and six yards to go at the 50. Lewis for the late pitch. Taken by Jeff Fagan. Graham had to stop there. It's going to be marked at the 47-yard line for a gain of three, and it'll make it third down at three yards to go. A long three. Well, that was a wishbone exactly the way it was supposed to be run offensively and defensively. Lewis pulled the ball out from the fullback. Bobby Johnson came in from the secondary to take Lewis, and Lewis had to pitch it out, and Graham was covering the pitch out. Bendris is in a wide right for Alabama now. Lewis has still got the ball. John Haynes has him, and he's going to be about two yards short of the first down. Mark Lang also on the tackle. When they're running that wishbone to this right side, it's uh, it's tough. Holly's doing a good job in there, and Schultz, Schultz is that linebacker we were telling you about, 6'6", 240. He's like a big defensive end, and he's he's got speed to go with it. But that uh, Dagon Lewis is squirming. He still almost got the first down after being hit at the line of scrimmage. Fourth and two, and the punting unit comes on now for Alabama. A shift into deep punt formation. Sending Malcolm Simmons deep. Marshall is deep to receive it for Texas. The left footer puts it up there. Cat signal goes up. Let's the ball go. Past the end line. Touchback. You know that. And I'm not sure the college rule, to be very honest with you, but that uh, Alabama guy could have caught that ball in the air on about the two-yard line as long as there wasn't a Texas guy trying to catch it. First and ten at the 20-yard line for the Texas Longhorns. The postseason excitement continues a week from... Interested spectator down here on the sidelines, John David Crow. This is Bear Bryant's only Heisman Trophy winner. Texas A&M, back in 57. You live in this part of the country. Who are you rooting for? Well, I think I better root for the, for the man that really deserved that trophy that I got in my house. But, uh, no, it's a great game, and it's just a great... A great happening, really, to, to be down here and be part of this because two great universities with such pride and tradition. And a great finish to this football game. Let's watch it. First and ten now for Texas. They have the ball at their own 28 trail by three points. Five minutes, 59 seconds to play. Brewer. Incomplete at the 40-yard line. Driving Donnie Little. Then Bob Harris covering second and ten. Well, the, the routes here, this time Sampleton really kind of gets too close to uh, Donnie Little. They're both in the same area, but the in routes have been the big plays for Texas, and I'm, I can see him going in and breaking out to the corner to hit a big play. They've been so successful on the inside routes that the corner's got to be open. Second down and 10 yards to go. Four. Incomplete. This time for Herky Wall. Benny Perrin cover. Third and ten. 
Uh, Brewers reading who's ever man to man he's throwing the ball to and at that time Perrin had uh, Herky Walls man to man all the way on a deep sideline route but the ball was thrown too far to the outside. Big third down for Texas. Five minutes 51 seconds left to play in this game and the clock starts on the snap. Third and ten. Not a little wide to the right side. Herky Walls wide to the left side. Four. Sabaldon, Lawrence Sabaldon, the tight end, and it's in Alabama territory at the 43-yard line. Jim Bob Harris, the defender. About this time, Sampleton was the play. They missed him over the middle. He came on an in route over the middle where Brewer missed him earlier in the uh, fourth quarter. This time he broke back out to the corner on Jim Bob Harris and makes an excellent play. Actually, Harris is in pretty decent position right here. But Sampleton pulls the ball in. An excellent throw by Brewer and even a better catch. All right, Sampleton from Seguin, Texas, and it is a 37-yard pickup. First and 10 at the 43-yard line. And on a draw play, it's Terry R from Abilene. Jimmy Watts made the tackle on the draw. Tommy Wilcox defending also. Well, when you run a draw play in Alabama on first down, it's kind of a guessing game. They do so much stunning inside. You just have to hope you hit the right hole. That time it was still pretty good by Lyles. And the linebackers are pretty good shape. Robbie Jones. Second down, 11 yards for Texas at the Alabama 44. Well, Bevo has had a long day. Bevo is not going to leave now. I don't think so. And it's completed. Taken by Rodney Tate. Rodney Tate is short of the first down by about a yard at the 30. I pitch on the tackle. Now, Bevo is properly loaded now. <laughs> A big game like this, and Bevo's in the truck. He wants to beat the traffic. Four minutes, 20 seconds left to play in this game. Texas trailing by three and driving here. Third down on the yard to go. Give it to the fullback, Terry Orr. He got the first and ten. They keep the drive alive. Robbie Jones made the tackle for Alabama. Texas first down and ten yards to go at the Alabama 31. This crowd is really alive at the Cotton Bowl. Walls to the right side, Donnie Little to the left side, Robert Burr is the quarterback. Robert Burr. He still got it and they've got him. Russ Wood got to him. The Alabama Rush pulled him down. 37. Time remaining. Inside lower right. Three minutes, 30 seconds. And running. Second down and 16 yards to go at the 37. Little and a wide left. Good. And it is second by Sabalin. Sabalin inside the 20. He's at the 18-yard line, first and 10. Lawrence Sabal in the tight end. Stopped by Harrison Castillo of Texas now. Trailing by three points. First and 10 at the Alabama 18. Three minutes, five seconds to play. Well, that was perfect timing by Brewer because Benny Perrin was waiting to the outside. That was his own defense. He thought it was man-to-man, -man, but Perrin was outside. Wilcox was inside, and Sampleton caught the ball just before Perrin got over there, and he could have intercepted that ball. But he made the play, and it's a first down. Out of the eye formation, Robert Burrow, the quarterback, Donnie Little in the wide right. Give it to the tailback. Taken there by Rodney Tate. Rodney Tate bounced off. Got a foot or so, and that's all. Wilcox and Al Blue in to make the tackle. You know, they haven't run the uh, on first down that counter play where they ran before back to the weak side. The fullback off the tackle strong. They counter back to the weak side. They're just trying to hit into that middle, and that's uh, that's kind of rugged right now. Second down and still 10 yards to go at the Alabama 18-yard line. Alabama leading by a score of 10 to 7. Brewer on the run, and it's caught by Donnie Little. Donnie Little is out of bounds at the eight-yard line. They spot it right there. They'll want to take a long look across the field at the possible first down. 
Seifman and Dallin. He's got it about, about a couple of inches, Lindsay. Well, they move the sticks. It is first down and goal to go. John Walker comes in at the tailback. The ball is spotted at the eight-yard line. Well, just a sprint out to the left. A little again. Uh, with good hands. He pulled that ball in. Pretty good defense. Robert Brewer went over to get his next play. From Freddie Akers, his head coach. First down and goal to go at the eight-yard line. Running back to the line formation. With a curve, go back, and it's in there for a touchdown. Terry Orr. Terry Orr for the touchdown. Texas takes the lead. Terry Orr, a sophomore from Abilene, Texas. Well, again, Orr is running off the block of Mike Babb, and I guess it's one of those old uh, cliches. You have to see the film, but for me, it looks like Babb's doing a heck of a job blocking down, and Orr gets back to the outside. Also, good block on that side by Joe Sharon, and Orr's in the end zone standing up. There you are, the sophomore fullback. First through from the eight-yard line to put Texas out in front. There's a marker down there for some purpose. And an official is coming over to talk to Freddie Akers. Looks like they might get the players on the sideline. So foul, foul. Illegal delay. Offense. Penalty assessed on the kickoff. Illegal delay before they tried the conversion. That's all the uh, celebrating in the end zone. It's going to cost them five on the ensuing kickoff. That's right. That's what they did. Two minutes, five seconds. Remaining to be played in this game. Conversion attempt coming now. Raul Alegre is in. He went from Mexico to Sheldon, Washington, to the University of Montana, to the University of Texas. And it's good. For the Texas Longhorns are coming back up the field with a lead of 14 to 10 over the Crimson Tide of Alabama. Two minutes, five seconds left. Look again. Touchdown. Here's Babb blocking down. Also, Joe Sharon is pushing everybody out of the way to that side. And there's Orr in the end zone. So we are set for a barn burner finish here. Two minutes, five seconds left in the Cotton Bowl. Texas 14, Alabama 10. It'll be now Texas kicking off. And they have taken the lead, and Joey Jones has gone deep, and this crowd is ready for the finish here now. Paul Bear Bryant, 68 years of age, with his Alabama team, and its 23rd consecutive bowl game, a record. He realized coming in he had a shot at a possible national championship, depending, depending of course, on what happens to teams like Clemson and Georgia. Ahead of him in the national rankings, Joey Jones has dropped back deep. Bryant was also trying for another record, seven consecutive bowl victories in seven consecutive years, something no team has ever done. But Texas has taken the lead now. The long runs realized coming in they had a possible shot at the national championship. So it's all come down to this. Two minutes, five seconds. Joey Jones chases over. He's got it at the one-yard line. Joey Jones to the five, to the 10, to the 15, to the 20. 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 40, finally goes down at the Texas 37 yard line. What a run back by Joey Jones. He was finally stopped by Mike Luck. So now Alabama will try to take it off. That five yard penalty, that ball would have been into the end zone. They might have had a touchback, but that five yard penalty assist on the kickoff allowed him to run the ball back. And that's a big five yards because he brings the ball back into well into Texas territory at the 30s and 38 yard line. 62 yard kickoff return. 62. First and 10 at the 38 yard line now. Lewis, the quarterback, the referee is coming in to stop play. Captain Schultz. Captain Schultz. You want to talk to Captain Schultz. And you're going to have to appeal to the crowd on this one. That's the second one. If, if I stop it one more time, it's the first one. No, that's, that's the second one. Who knows? It's all over. No, no, it's, it's, it's your home team. All right, now you make appeal to the crowd. Referee is telling the Texas captain that as the home team, he wants him to appeal to the crowd to lessen the noise here in the Cotton Bowl. Yes, sir. Well, Next time. Time. How come we can hear it? Hey, Kate. Well, that's my judgment there. Well, that's why I tell our quarterback, don't pay attention, you go on. Because we uh, hear. Well, uh, it's the second time I've stopped. Well, what are you trying to tell me? I'm trying to tell you.
tell you if I had something. Referee Don Safford from the Atlantic Coast Conference telling Akers he's not to appeal to the crowd. Akers is appealing to the crowd to be quiet. Joey Jones working on his leg there. We're going to go on the smack. The referee was saying it's the second time he had to stop playing to cross the crowd level. Well, now he continues. First down and 10 yards to go, Alabama. At the Texas 38, 154 on the clock. Lewis. Going long. And it is intercepted at the one yard line. Intercepted by Texas, William Graham. William Graham, who led in interception for Texas during the season with seven, has picked it off, and Texas gets the ball at the one-yard line. Well, that's interesting. I'd like to see this back. It's a great interception, but I wondered uh, if he wasn't carried into the end zone. This is going to put the ball in the one-yard line, and Alabama's got some timeouts left. Here's the ball in between the uh, two defenders, but... Graham comes over and makes a heck of a play right here, and he was. He was on the one-yard line, and he was stopped and then knocked into the end zone. Good call by the official. The first interception of the ball game. He had seven during the regular season. This is the third time in four years that the Cotton Bowl game has been decided in the last three minutes of play. Texas is leading 14-10. to 10. Texas has the ball first and ten at the one-yard line. Well, that's only the fourth interception in two years against Alabama. They've had two this year, one last year. They don't throw the ball a great deal, but they've still thrown the ball over 100 times this year with two interceptions, and this is their third, and a costly one. Well, now we have a timeout. Members of the training staff have come onto the field. One minute, 47 seconds left to play. First and ten at the one for Texas. Second down, nine yards to go. Ball at the two. That crew works better than it sings. It's second now. The ball is by Robert Brewer. I thought that was a Mormon Tabernacle Choir. Less one or two. Warren Lyles and Robbie Jones on the tackle. Well, they're gonna again, again, Alabama stops the clock with a timeout. They'll get the ball back, Lindsay, with about a minute to go. And they still have a chance because Texas will be putting out of their own end zone. 136 on the clock. It'll be third and seven at the three-yard line. Texas leading by a score of 14 to 10. Bear Bryant trying to pull out every strategy stop he knows right here to get that football back and see if he can win one in the closing seconds of the ball game. Well, if everything goes according to the plan, they'll get the ball back with about a minute. Depending on where they run it back, a good kick will probably get the ball back to the neighborhood of the 40-yard line, so they'll have plenty of time. Well, Bear Bryant is one of the most discussed sports figures in America, one of the most prominent. And if you wonder who's making the decisions over there right now, it's Paul Bryant. You know, the statistic that he's got 45 pupils or former players or what have you, assistant coaches or now head coaches or have been head coaches is pretty amazing in itself. He makes them want to coach. Brewer now. Guys it up there for about one more yard. Warren Lyles and Mike Rodriguez converging. So it'll be fourth down. 125 on the clock and it's running. So they look up at the 30-second clock now. It has 20 seconds on it. They don't want to get in too big a hurry here with fourth down coming up now. The punting team is sent out and just now. They'll probably even take a penalty here. It'll be half the distance to the goal. Which won't matter much. John Goodson is the punter, and I think they're going to stay in there. The one second, and that'll cost them five right now. The delay. The game clock is down to 56 seconds. It won't start again until the snap. Delay of game will cost them half the distance. The two-yard line. Well, this is where Goodson, 41.7 average, needs to boom one out. You know, you, you think about a safety, but it, uh, it wouldn't be a smart play here because that would put them, Alabama within a field goal to winning the game. If it would have been a five-point difference, of course, the safety would be a smart play. Jeremiah Castile is deep. Castile is the man who's back to field the punt at the 45 Alabama. Normally, it would be Jones. 
And now they're going to take the safety. Well, they're going to take the safety. I'll well, be doggone. That's how much I know. There you go. I thought about the safety, but and he I, takes it. I, 48 I, seconds. We have two point swing. Of course, they got a lot of confidence in their defense. So they get a chance to punt from the 20, so they probably saved themselves almost 30 yards in field position. And instead of taking the gamble, losing uh, the game on a touchdown, they gamble a little bit here on a field goal. But again, they have a lot of confidence in their defense. No timeouts left from Alabama. I guess that was a pretty good decision. Well, that that's the other consideration the fact that they now have put themselves in a position where they can be beaten by the field goal and that is a consideration and i'm sure they thought about that they get the free kick of course from the 20-yard line they can put it in play in any manner it's uh, usually punted because there's no rush of course the restraining line is 10 yards in advance of the kicker so alabama is huddling texas is huddling to see how they're going to play the last 48 seconds of the cotton bowl game in dallas texas with texas leading 14 to 12. Castillo is deep. There he is. You saw Joey Jones getting worked on along the sidelines after his tremendous return of the kickoff. But Castillo is now in there as the kick return man. They got Pendris up there in the middle. Ready to get anything that might be short or bounced up there. This uh, Peter Kim is a pretty darn good field goal kicker, Lindsay. He's 15 out of 20. Of course, he's kicked one today, and he's four for four between the 40 and the 49 yard line. Castile at the 24 yard line to the 30, 35, 40. Stacked up at the 40 yard line. So Alabama has the ball first and 10 at the Alabama 40. And the clock says 43 seconds left to play in this game. Alabama trailing by two points. Bobby Mitchell was downfield to make the tackle. They could probably get one big play in over the middle. Uh, then they'd have to run up and throw the ball out of bounds. And then from there, they'd have to start getting out of bounds to stop the clock to give them a chance for a field goal. So they're in a pretty uh, tough situation right now to, without those timeouts. Ben Gross and Clark, wide receivers. Walter Lewis repeating. Lewis is back to the Texas defense. He dropped the ball. Going to be blown dead, I think. Going to be blown dead, I think. The Ola. Kiki Diola got to him. It was blown dead at the 32-yard line, but the clock is running. 27 seconds and running. At the 32-yard line. Second down and 18. Lewis. Stepping up. He doesn't have a lot of time. He's going to now come back to the inside, and that's a mistake as far as the clock's concerned. Well, that was a mistake. Uh, he had a chance to cut back inside. If he would have beat the two defenders there, he would have got back out of bounds again. But Three that wasn't seconds, a good decision. Two seconds. One second. And the game is over. The game is over. Lewis took the ball, tried to pop it outside to stop the clock. They had no timeouts left. They had no timeouts left. And so as Lewis popped it over there, the game already had ended. Keep in mind that the NFL playoffs. Six annual young comedians. My brother and I are the hosts.